to say no Cause the stuff will lead you aside The faith, the path of spirit and truth The path of trust, the path of hope for my people I represent myself to speak in the booth And all my people find their way to the truth My name is Storm Sack and I've been attending Sweat since I was a little kid I encourage more people, more youth to attend sweats. It is important for our people to learn the culture and the traditions. How do you feel when you see youth lost? When I see youth lost and not practicing their traditions or language, it, it sort of makes me sad. They should attend more ceremonies and talk to elders because it's important to learn. It's important to learn from our people. My friend is a uh, this is Julian Marshall. He's been my friend for a long time. He never experienced a sweat lodge yet, and I can't wait to, to see how he reacts. I think he'll have a great experience, but it's going to be hard to encourage him to come. My name is Julian Marshall. I'm 17 years old. I go to Sydney Academy, and I like to play guitar. I know Storm from being around in the res and playing baseball with him. What do you know about this project? Um, absolutely nothing. I just got told to come by this guy. So what did he tell you? Just show up. If I told him, he wouldn't come. I told him now. You know we're doing the sweat, right? Two minutes ago. <laughs> so he just told you. Yeah. What do you know about sweat lodges? I'm pretty sure you have to walk in a certain way and leave. That's about it. And now something about the rocks being grandfathers. And I think there's... What do they call it? Um, like sections. Not like periods, but like rounds. rounds. Yeah. My neighbor has one every Sunday. What do you see at your neighbor's? Smoke. A lot of smoke. Um, I hear drumming sometimes, I think. And then you just look over, you see a sweat lodge, see people going in. A lot of times in the summer, I'll be there swimming, and then you pop out of the water, just nothing but smoke over on the water. And then you come out, your clothes are smelling like smoke, and you hear the drumming, and you try to listen to your music, but it's doom, doom. But would you be willing to try it, given the opportunity? I think I would. So what can we do to help prepare you for your first sweat? Um, teach me about it. Show me what to do, or just tell me information about sweat lodges. I think it's important that he that he tries it at least once. He's never really been into traditions or culture or ceremony. I'm excited for him. If you could talk to your future self coming out of your first sweat, what would you say to yourself? Proud of you. I think everybody should attend the sweat, not just our people. People that, you know, that are interested in our culture, people that need prayer, and need help, need strength. The sun shines on everybody the same. No matter if you're white, black, anything. Shines on every animal the same, every insect. We're no better. Hi, my name is Caroline Sylvester. I'm 19 years old. I'm a youth from member two, and I love my culture. I love teaching it, and I love learning about it. It's important, especially today, because everyone is so lost, even me sometimes. We don't know who we are. Where we came from, our language is, is not there all the time and our traditions aren't there. Teaching others and encouraging others to learn about the culture is really, really important today. When I see other Mi'kmaq youth lost, it hurts. It hurts seeing that. And I see that a lot. I look around and, you know, sometimes it's hard to talk to people my age. They don't want to learn or they're not encouraged enough to learn. Tell me about your friend. My friend is really young. She's 10 years old. I think 10 or 11. Her name is Jada Paul. She, she's like my little best friend. <laughs> she's, I call her the little elder. I know she hasn't been to a sweat before. She's been so involved in the powwows and singing and learning about things that, I don't know, I just thought that it'd be, it'd be a great experience to see her go to a sweat. We don't start this stuff till everybody's ready because this is part of the ceremony, is getting it ready and so that everyone has an appreciation for what, what happens so that no one can just really take for granted like how much work goes into one of these, especially in the winter. Have you approached her yet? No, I haven't. I think I have to talk to her parents about that first, but I am going to approach her soon enough. My name is Jada, and I'm 10 years old, and I go to Memory 2 Elementary School. Caroline was my 
sister's best friend. She's coming over all the time, talking to my sister. And then I started to know her. Now she's just like my friend. So have you ever been in a sweat before? No, I never. What do you know about this video that we're doing? Do um, going to a sweat lodge. How do you feel about that? Kind of scared, but I'm okay with it. You're kind of scared of going into the sweat? Not really. I even though it's my first time, but I'll still go in. Can you tell me everything you know about sweat lodge? Um, it's when you like go in, and if you're too hot, people usually put their faces on the ground to make it a little bit colder because the ground is cold. And when women are like sitting in a sweat lodge, they don't like to put their legs out. They usually put it on the side. Who told you about that? Who told you about sweat lodges? Caroline. What do you think going into a sweat for the first time is going to be like? I think it's going to be fun because I would like to not just sit there or something, more do prayers and just talk. Are you afraid of the dark? No, not really. Same it's sometimes when I'm in my room, yeah. It's hopefully a positive experience and uh, hopefully everything works. I hope that Jada's allowed to attend the sweat and I hope that she, she enjoys it. My name is Tyler Sack. Originally from Member 2, but raised in Shubenacadie. I have a master's degree in sociology from the University of Guelph. I'm a seventh year Sundancer with White Eagle Sundance under Chief William Nevin. I've been going to sweats for about 10 years now. When I see young people in our community not representing themselves well, I feel insulted. Because like, you're not representing me well. You're not representing your family well. So when I see people lost, I want to see our own people enforce our own behavioral checks and say, you carry yourself with more pride. I want to bring my cousin and one of my closer friends, Paul Gould. He's a year younger than me. Uh, we grew up together, you know, knowing each other. We're very close. I consider him one of my closest friends. He reminds me of our grandfather. This past year, Paul and I lost our grandfather. And my grandfather is the person who really got me involved in ceremony. And I think it would be good for all of us in terms of like how we handle our mourning and a good grieving process if Paul comes to sweat with me. Have you approached him yet? I did. I approached Paul. I asked him. He was a little reluctant, but I think he's committed. My name is Paul Gould. I'm 25. I live here in Member 2. I'm a carpenter by trade. I like uh, playing hockey and baseball, boxing, fishing and hunting. My friend Tyler is actually my cousin Tyler. We're first cousins, our mothers are sisters. I don't really know too much about this project. I got voluntold, pretty much. I participated in sweats when I was, my first sweat when I was about nine or 10. It was at my uncle uh, Donald Marshall's um, Ute camp in Malagawaj. I started going down the wrong path in life. I was a, I'm a recovering alcoholic and I lost touch with my traditional ways. I shouldn't have really um, lost contact with it. It was really good for your mind and body. My idea of a sweat would be to be reborn to like cleanse your body and spirit. It's a place to pray. And a lot of people told me that's where you can go to let a lot of your emotion out without anyone having to worry about anyone talking about what you talk about or nobody says nothing. Personally, I think it's going to be emotional. There's some stuff that I was holding on to for a couple of years that I have to let out. I believe that in a sweat lodge would be the best place to, to let that emotion out and be reborn, I guess you could say. I feel confident in myself for um, for the sweat on Sunday. And I think it'll be a big step for me to get back into my culture and our healing ways. <laughs> The Lord of Gekil.
lodge keeper, it's honored to be here with the youth that are either returning or first time coming to the lodge. And uh, I remember when I was eight years old. And, oh, <laughs> when I was eight, I remember. Thanks to my elders, to Danny, to my brother, to Lilani, and to the many other elders. William Evans, George Paul, the ones who passed on a lot of teachings to me. But the elders that they learned from too are our, our grand grandparents. They spent time down here and they learned from your families too. So it's a true honor to be part of the ceremonial circle. Danny Paul, I uh, also have uh, made a commitment a long time ago to uh, follow these teachings in the manner in which they are supposed to be uh, passed on, and that's to have our younger people involved at a very early age. And I'm very glad to see our uh, younger people here today. It's good to have a talking circle first, so that they can experience in what we're doing now. And, uh, you know, it's so important because we talk about process and procedures and, and protocol and it's important that we teach them the best way it can but most importantly as long as you're sincere and respectful we will see it the ancestors will see it the spirits will see it the creator will see it and we know that you're there for a good reason so if you guys have any questions or concerns about what may happen or what can happen you know now is the time to talk about it. what do we say before we go this it's the same thing as when you uh, want to get out. You say, no, you're welcome to your ancestors. You sit with your ancestors. Every one of them from the time people were on the earth. Why do you want to go to the lodge? To get back in touch with, like I said, my traditional leaves. I find it helped a lot growing up. Even. The whole teachings, they talk about drug and alcohol abuse end up poisoning yourself. Jeff said it. That's when your spirit leaves the body. Your spirit is always there. But it steps away from you when you do these things to yourself. Because you're harming yourself, you're harming your spirit. Does it take long, like, to, to in this white thought? Start to, start to finish? A couple hours. What I heard today seems like a good place to find yourself and like your true self. Just thinking going into a sweat and how dark it is going to be and hot and all our ancestors and our people will be there that have passed away. And hopefully my granddad will be next to me. Come on in. Men first, oldest to youngest, and then women. You're a man. <laughs> it was kind of cold, like it was like a little bit colder when they bring the pipe in, and then when we like when we first got in and they were showing like water in the rocks, that's when the steam came. Up, so. It will be like in the summertime, you know, when it's like super hot. That's how it feels. You're like, you're like, oh, it's hot. That's what I. It was cold, but it was good. Good. Finally get to pray. I haven't prayed in a long time. Time to go back, like I need that push. But now that I'm here, so I'm enjoying it again. So I'll be back. I choose the path that will keep my spirit renewed. The wild way in life that will keep me alive. You gotta say no, cause the stuff will lead you aside. The path of faith, the path of spirit and truth. The path of trust, the path of hope for all my youth. I represent myself to speak in the booth at home.
my people.